I would call it completion more so than disappearance. Now, in order to talk about this appropriately for me, I have to include the I have to include the material of the densities um, because if I speak about this from a purely human perspective with everything that we know as a human being on a spiritual journey, the perspective is too limited and the projections will be flawed. Because this is what a lot of people do when they talk about completion or disappearance. They take that from a really human level and they project that as the end result. And then the human being tries to get to that end result. And so you get this spiritual seeking thing of like, okay, this teacher was completely gone. I want to be completely gone. And it creates all these kinds of weird mechanics and imbalances. So you have to understand that this is a continual journey way beyond this lifetime. And what I'm talking about is not the disappearance of the ego. I'm talking about the disappearance of the soul or the completion of the soul itself, that which is already beyond this lifetime anyway. So that thing itself, that collection of lives that itself is on a journey through the densities, through the different, some people call them dimensions. I prefer the word densities. And at some stage, one of the lessons or one, one of the main learnings that a, that a beingness goes through is that of a merger with all that there is. In other, ways, in other words, you lose your individuated identity in a sense. It's hard to talk about this. Um, so it's all approximations. But in a sense, you could imagine that the consciousness itself that has the soul identity that has and beyond that even has the group soul identity, that itself completes its journey of a complete cycle. A complete cycle being a cycle of creation itself. A cycle of a universe itself, so to speak. And at that stage, the soul, if you want to call it that, at that stage, at that point, is looking, it's turning its gaze back into foreverness completely. And it's leaving behind a blueprint of itself, everything that it has learned. That blueprint is what we might know of as the higher self. Your higher self is the blueprint left behind by you millions of years from now, moving into infinity, uh, if that is comprehensible. So, like I said, it's not so much disappearance because you do not disappear. It's not that you disappear, it's that you complete. It's that... And that's why it's hard to talk about because in a sense you leave behind all the individuation, but it doesn't mean that what is the essence of you disappears. What If you exist now, you can never cease to exist. It's not possible. So there will always be the existence that is you, no matter what you go through, no matter how ultimate or absolute it is. But that you, which is the essence of you today, which you could say, okay, is my soul or my consciousness that goes through these different experiences, that let's just call it soul for now, that soul essence, the consciousness that makes that up, will still be existent, even though its identity is merged with all that there is. Meaning that you become the awareness of all that there is. No longer of Ventinho, no longer of whatever group, collective consciousness there is beyond Ventinho, etc. It is the merger with all that there is, it's the returning back to the infinite creator at the end of a cycle of exploration. This is not the end, because a new cycle begins right after, right after meaning after a timeless time of incomprehensible, indescribable foreverness. And then you begin a new cycle, which will be different. It will be the eighth density, so to speak. And this, this completion um, happens somewhere between the seventh and the eighth density. The eighth density being the new start of a new octave, of a new creation altogether, of which I cannot really say very much because I don't really have access to that. It's too, it's too unimaginable. It's totally different. So there's no words, there's no concepts for that. It's very hard to even get any kind of accurate glimpse of it for myself to be saying. I have hypotheses, but that's about it. But first through seventh can be fairly accurately described, although the higher the densities, the more it will be an approximation because the less we will have any frame of reference for what that way of being is like. So what I was experiencing or feeling around that time of June 1st leading up to it is I was feeling that the time 
space reality that I was a part of, this collective, was not moving fast enough for me. It may sound a little arrogant, but that was the experience. It wasn't moving fast enough for me to be able to stay inside of. So I felt like I was either going to die, pop out, or something had to change collectively, fast, still within my agreement of being part of this collective. Um, or the identity would start to, in that sense, merge more towards that native level where I'm actually exploring, which is starting to explore these things of turning my gaze back into foreverness. So in a sense, what I got was a download from my native level, native soul level. So the lessons that I'm learning at that level were, in a sense, a glimpse of that was infused into this life from this perspective. So I started to feel the human, ref not the human reflections, um, I started to feel whatever portions I was able to experience from this point of view of my native soul's actual journey and what's relevant for itself, in addition to it coming quote-unquote, here to be of service and to have an experience like this. But what it is going through for itself, like none of this is new for me, but what is new for me at that level was sort of um, falling through the veil a little bit, if that makes sense. So then the human goes through these experiences and processes what that is like. But that's not an immediate process, because at that level also that it, there's a great sense of timelessness, and it's really hard to describe like, oh, I went through shift from this day to this day. It also takes nonlinear, timeless time or marination time, so to speak, at these levels especially, to really complete these types of lessons. So it's not something that can be equated to even have anything to really do with this life I discovered. It's simply that I received these glimpses of it, and I was trying to reconcile how that works, how that, how that integrates with my experience here. And so I feel like it has, in many ways, in almost always, it has actually done what it was meant to do for me. I feel that the collective has changed, has gone through a change required for me to be interested again to be physically focused, which happened around September this year. Hence, here I am, teaching, sharing, and again, active and in enjoyment, because now the pace that I'm at and the pace of what this environment holds are actually not as far apart anymore. So, so at least for another chunk of time, I feel like I can put my foot to the ground and create as much good stuff as I can. And so I'm excited again. Like I feel, I feel like yes, okay, I can be here. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like there's such a difference that there's, that there is um, an incompatibility, so to speak. There's compatibility again, and that which had to happen which is me growing really tired of one cycle of the energy of this environment having exhausted itself and feeling like it's starting to become really incompatible. That for Having that experience for a few months is what I needed to be able to have a download of even more of my native frequency. And if I look back upon my spiritual journey, what I find is that as I am going through this as a human being, as I went through this as a human being for the past, say, 10 years, incrementally, I have sort of recaptured the path that I have already done for whatever millions of years, so to speak, in terms of our time, at my native level. And so I'm, I'm given downloads of these and then I integrate them. I'm given downloads of these and then I'm integrating them. And then every time I get a new download, it's of a slightly higher density lesson that I've already learned natively, but I'm recapturing very briefly and rapidly from this point of view. So sometimes it has been a little confusing or earth shattering. But then when it gets integrated, I feel like I'm more and more closely transparent to who I'm actually, who I actually am. Um, and so this was sort of, well, one of the more absolute glimpses of where I'm actually at, so to speak, that I've had so far. And so the integration process of that and my response to that is sort of what you saw in those meetings. And ever since that has integrated and calmed down and did what it did. And like I said, and the, my disclaimer at that time also was, I have no idea what's actually going to happen. I might stop teaching. I might continue to teach. It might take on a different form. And the way that I'm sensing it now, but as, again, the same disclaimer, I don't know. It can take me in a different direction at any moment. But at this time, it feels like, at least for a foreseeable amount of future, I am really excited about living a physical life 
and uh, sharing and teaching and even more so than that, creating um, creating a lot of new things and expanding the team. And so I'm very physically oriented actually right now. Like I'm busier than I've ever been in many ways. But it all feels really good. Like it all feels really like it's backed up with integration. It's backed up with all that. It no longer needs to be either this or that. It's like, as with anything that I usually go through, eventually it happens, it ends up being simultaneous to each other. So I feel that what it did and what I, what I exclaimed or expressed in those meetings, those last couple meetings that I gave, has in a sense completed itself and has done what it had to do vibrationally for myself. And I'm still here and it's exciting to be here. So simultaneous. Could I speak more of the native soul level? Sure. Um, even this is a vague concept because the reason it's hard to talk about is because time is not linear beyond this level. So to put it in linear terms is a little tricky because we like to see things in terms of linearity and, 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 and in a sense there is a linear progression to everything. Even at a soul level there is a linear progression. But it's very hard to pinpoint where you truly natively are at because even natively you are in a sense all over the place. You are spread out over the different densities. It's not as cookie cutter or simple or straightforward to say that, okay, I am natively at this level, I'm learning this lesson, and the rest is not mine, because you have extensions in all densities, even before you are natively fully oriented in, say, a sixth density experience, even if you are still sort of natively exploring your free will at the soul level of fourth, fifth density, you already have extensions into sixth density, you already have certain activations there as well, you already have a higher self that's already there as well. So it's hard to hierarchically or, or, or talk about it in terms of any kind of order. If, do you have a specific question about it? We have, ac we have access to our soul consciousness, um, but it will be reflected from this mirror, this shard of the mirror. In a sense you could see your soul as the totality of the mirror that is your consciousness, reflecting infinity back to itself in a certain way through certain expressions. And all these lives are different shards of it, like, like a broken, and they all have their own level of free will and they're all reflecting in different ways and they can all be turned and moved around. So when you move back around, so to speak, to contemplate or intuit or download information of your, say, higher self or your soul level consciousness, it will be your mirror receiving the light from the soul and having its own reflection or interpretation of it. Does that make sense?